and here is our first new component. So this is a transfer case. This is mounted to the back of our eight-speed automatic transmission, which is here, and obviously on the back of the V6 engine, which will be here. Within the transfer case is a clutch pack, this rotating object here. If the clutches are open, then any drive from the engine through the transmission goes straight to the rear wheels and the car will drive exactly like a two-wheel drive car. No torque goes to the front wheels. As soon as we start to close that clutch pack, when we start to take some of that drive and apply it through this front, different, front drive shaft to the front differential to the wheels. So we can linearly vary that clutch pack between open or closed or anywhere in between. And that's how the system is continuously adapting, moving the torque of the engine between the two wheels. That clutch pack is either open or closed through a cam profile, which is controlled by a servo, which is controlled by the control unit within the transfer case. That control unit takes sensors, inputs from you, from your throttle, from your steering, the output of the engine, what the wheels are doing in terms of slip, and what the car's doing in terms of its dynamic character, its pitch and its roll and its yaw. You shouldn't be aware of anything that's happening, you should just be aware that the car is actually feeling precise and adjusting itself to the conditions it sees. The drive goes forward to this front differential, it's mounted to the side of the engine, and then the two independent drive shafts to the, each of the two wheels. This one on the right hand side goes through the engine sump, you can see it just there. The reason we took it through the sump was to make sure with the engine uh, is as low as possible. We don't want to raise the engine up, so we've changed the dynamic character and the centre of gravity of the car. <coughs> and similarly why we mounted the transfer case as close to the engine as possible. The overall weight of the system is about 70 kilograms. The overall weight of the car is about 1,800 kilograms. So you can see the weight distribution has changed a little, but not hugely. So the drive shafts go to each of the two corner units. The biggest change here is in the corner units is these two uprights, these two knuckles as we describe them, completely new. They have to be stiffer. In the normal two-wheel drive, they have to react the torque that's delivered by the engine to the wheels. Um, we also have a new front subframe, or it's new because we have to have clearances for the drive shafts, clearances for the differential, but it also mounts the rack and the lower part of the suspension in the same place as a two-wheel drive car. So again, from a steering perspective, the car will behave like a two-wheel drive car it does. Uh, finally, uh, we've done some minor tuning to bushes and suspension rates, again, just to suit the dynamic character we want out of this new chassis. Anna mentioned aluminium, so if you're not familiar with an XJ, it's an all aluminium body shell. Okay, that gives us a significant weight advantage over a steel monocoque shell, about 150 kilograms. Uh, it uses different types of aluminium, so it uses cast aluminium, so this big turret here is cast, and pressed aluminium sheet, which are these units here. They're all joined together using mechanical rivets, so these little rivets over here provide the strength through a mechanical joint, and we supplement that for fatigue loading by using a heat curing adhesive. So between the joints is some heat adhesive which cures when we send it through the paint ovens. So this gives us a very light but very stiff structure and is based on similar techniques used in the aerospace industry. So that's the mechanical layout of the, of the underbody. If we move on to the control strategy, um, <clears throat> this graphic over here will play two films. Uh, the first one will be the car operating in normal mode, and the second one will be the car operating in winter mode. So remember I said you could have the car in normal, dynamic, 
or winter. So if we start off with this one with the car in normal mode. So this will show at the, an XJ driving on a wet road. So it's not very icy conditions, but there is some level chances of some wheel slip. The car's in normal mode and you can see the level of power being transmitted to the front wheels and the rear wheels. So from a standing start, we'll automatically apply 10% of the drive to the front wheels and 90% to the rear wheels. The drive is accelerating, but the system is monitoring now the level of the wheel slip, doesn't see any, so it maintains that 10%, 90% split. Uh, in a minute, you're going to give the car an input, you're going to turn the steering wheel, so you get a steering input, and the weight distribution of the car will also change. The car now starts to adjust the drive between the front and the rears accordingly to make sure the car now feels really confident, turns in well, and delivers a consistent power through the curve. Once it exits the corner, the car monitors the system again and reduces it. And in this case, it's now on a dry road, no power going to the front or the power going to the back, behaving exactly like a two-wheel drive car does. Returns to a wet road and you can see we get more drive to the front. So all the time the system is monitoring and you're doing nothing. It's just continuously changing. Now, it does that through two modes, <coughs> which we refer to as feed forward and feed back. So simplistically, feed forward is what you're doing as the driver. You're giving the car inputs, you're, tell, you're turning the steering wheel, you're applying the throttle. Now, what we don't want to happen is the car react late to that and apply traction control system. It upsets the drive, makes the car feel slow, makes the car feel difficult and unresponsive. What we want to use is the all-wheel drive system to make the car very crisp and turning well and be very enjoyable to drive. So, when we see a throttle input or steering input for you, we automatically start to apply drive to the front wheels to compensate. And that's called feed forward. So it's you applying input to the car and the car responding accordingly. Feed back is the car's input back to the transfer case. So it's looking all the time at the relative wheel speeds. If it starts to see slip, then again, we'll apply some additional drive to the appropriate axle to compensate and get to a position where the car is no longer slipping. Similarly, we use a traction control system, so independent braking of the wheels, to control the power delivery across the car. So the all-wheel drive is controlling power delivery uh, up and down the car, and the traction control system is applying it across the car. And the guys, I'm sure, will have shown you some of those demos today of how the car's doing that. Okay, so second film is the car is now in winter mode. So all you've done is change the mode. You haven't done anything else with the car, you just applied winter mode. And in this case, you've done that because the car is on an ice lake. This is in northern Sweden where we do a lot of our testing. It's a frozen lake covered in snow, so the conditions are very slippy. Okay, the car will go through the same maneuver as it did previously, accelerating away. But in this case, we've automatically applied 30% of the drive to the front, 70% to the rear. The car is accelerating and the car starts to see some level of wheel slip. So we apply more drive to the front to compensate and less drive to the rear until we get to a balance. It does that very quickly and it now, the car will now start to go into a, a corner. As it does so, you apply steering input, we also start to get some feedback from the wheels, and we increase the level of delivery even more to the front and back off on the rear. It gives again different conditions, that same confidence through the corner, and as the car exits the curve, we start to back off on the front and increase the power delivery to the rear. So same basic manoeuvres, different road conditions, the car was in winter mode, just changed the sensitivity of the power delivery as well. But all the time, Completely instinctive, responding to you as a driver and responding to the road conditions.